first on Guam. KUEM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUEM News headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson. Celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus. Cars Plus Finish Line Express is now open at Cars Plus in Mighty. The state-of-the-art car wash is now open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. McDonald's of Guam. I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant. Serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime. Crime is on the decline. According to the governor and chief of police, I'm Julian Hernandez with the latest crime report as we find out if the community agrees. Is the island safer? Panhandlers put on notice. Pressure is now being placed on some of the island's less fortunate. Local law enforcement is trying to get them off the streets. I'm Matsuki Hariyama with the story. A central village home is destroyed. A family of eight, at least three generations, now in recovery mode. And Guam doing what she does best, the community giving back to help them out. Hafadaydzam, buenas noches, buen venido para KU of News Primetime. Guahusi Nick Delgado. Sa Guahusi Destiny Cruz. Si dos maasi puri manyano mizu guini na programa. Well, we lead off us with a heartbreaking update to a crash reported in Barragada last month. The 42-year-old man who was riding his bike when he was hit by a car has died. He is identified by Guam police officers as Jeffrey Ignacio of Zotnia. Highway Patrol investigators learning of his death just this past Sunday. The crash happened on February 15th along Route 16 near the Guam main facility in Barragada. The driver of a white sedan was headed north when he hit Ignacio, who was riding the bike in the same direction. No word if any arrest will be made. Ignacio was being treated at Guam Regional Medical City, where he passed away. Our condolences to his family. This marks the fifth traffic-related death of this year. Condolences indeed to the Ignacios. Well, crime and other news on the island has gone down. The question is, the question rather, is that really what's happening in Guam in recent years? The Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration says yes to that question, highlighting a 2021 uniform crime report. The crime report points to the decline in recorded criminal activity. It also shows an increase in people getting arrested. Julian Hernandez has the story. The state of public safety is growing stronger, according to Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. The administration today releasing the statistics from the Uniform Crime Report from 2021, showing how violent crimes, burglaries, and car thefts have inched its way down. The numbers compare 2020 records with 2021. Though report states arrests jumped that same year by 7.15%. The report also including this chart that drug-related arrests in 2020 and 2021 have doubled since 2019 and the years prior. It's a report Jigo resident Linda Teodoro says she finds hard to believe. Uh, no, I do not agree about the crime rate being down and it's not safe to go out anywhere. They broke into my house to let all my dogs out almost two years ago, right on Holy Thursday. Yeah, so... And then around my village, it's just too rowdy. Uh, people up to no good. Maybe they arrest them, but I hear that they're, they're out again. And Ben Wada says crime is a problem in the South as well. Well, we have crime down in Agate, Santa Rita, people stealing things, you know, they're getting desperate. They're stealing anything that they can find. They even stole right out of my own front yard. And when did this happen, sir? That's about six months ago, maybe eight months ago. But uh, I caught it on video camera, so, so I was able to get her, get her arrested. Though he admits um, so he still feels so safe you, enough. You know, so Safety in the island has been a top issue since the governor claimed the territory is safer. Here's Governor Lou Leon Guerrero just one year ago. I also do know that they have a really great neighborhood watch organization out there. And uh, they're, work they're, they're taking care of their neighbors and their communities. And the police is just as much involved in it as 
anyone else. So. Would you say Thank you have a safer much. mom today? I do. Yes, I oh. do. The top brass of the police department echoed the same in this previous interview with KUAM. Is Guam safe? Absolutely. You know, Guam is a, is a very small knit community. And, uh, you know, we, we continue to pu push out uh, our community watch programs. Police Chief Stephen Ignatius stating today, quote, social media and mass media affects the perception of crime and it feeds into perceived fears. Adding that the picture of today's crimes has been amplified through modern media. But... The rates of arrests have increased as well, he says. It's just not as amplified. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News. Thanks, Julian. Well, the panhandling law, panhandling law has been in the books for about a decade. The law states it's illegal. Enforcement now being ramped up as Guam's attorney general calls for the public to report any aggressive panhandlers. Mitsuki Hirayama reports. At the Route 16 Harmon Loop intersection, a lone woman on crutches stands on the median holding a cardboard sign asking for donations. The Micronesia Mall intersection, empty. The ITC Tumaning intersection, no one there at midday today. This after Guam's Attorney General, Village Mayors and Guam Police Department announced Monday they will be actively cracking down on panhandlers, citing a decade-old law. The Aggressive Panhandling Act of 2013 makes it illegal to panhandle at any public place, roadway or median. The act allows panhandling only if meeting requirements like notifying DPD 24 hours prior, wearing an orange reflective vest, and other safety measures. Even though it's only being enforced now, the law is strict, stating anyone caught panhandling at areas like this could face fines of up to $500, but it's money that many of them already do not have especially for those who face chronic homelessness, like Ray Pomisset. What happened to you being out here? Came homeless. I love my mom. My dad lost the house. He passed away. And it's not really fun being out here. I really want to be in a shelter or if somebody has a heart to bring me into the house. He lost his parents and his home, and now wheelchair-bound after losing both legs, panhandling is a means of surviving. Have you been out here uh, asking people for donations? Yeah, just to put something in my mouth, buy me clothes, uh, hygiene stuff, that's about it. While he's aware panhandling is illegal, he simply doesn't want to go hungry. Basically, it's illegal to be out here asking people for donations. Did you know about that? Yeah, I know. I know. But what can I do? I don't want to starve. I want to try going on a public assistance, like food stamp welfare. I know that will help. Meantime, local authorities are ramping up enforcement, even asking the community to report any aggressive panhandlers, all in the name of road safety. I guess they're doing the right thing. They're trying to stop us from panhandling out there to be safe. Safe than sorry. That's better than being hit on the road. Matsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. A Barragata Heights family slowly picking up the pieces after their home is destroyed in a weekend fire. It caused a bit of a traffic mess as well as the roads were temporarily closed as first responders tended to the scene. Days later, the family of eight, including an expectant mother, began the process of recovering and getting back on their feet and the community already doing their part to give back. The burnt smell swirling in the blistering heat. A sad reminder of Saturday night's fire that ravaged the home of a Barragata family of eight and a half. Memories collected by an expectant mother, a grandfather, and the five living with them, blackened by flames. The house now covered in ash and debris, too far gone to stay in. KUAM learning what happened that night. The family, what they were doing was the, the father was just trying to cook dinner and barbecue for their family that night. Apparently, the, the fire got out of control. They were barbecuing. And so uh, the old man tried to distinguish and, you know, from spreading. A heroic effort that left Grandpa with severe burns. Still not enough to stop the blaze. The flames nearly reaching the tenants in the family's property just a few feet away. Their tenant of almost a year, Florence Lee, brought to tears recalling the situation. This is her 
because they lost everything. It affects me too because I just, it's not even uh, a year, but this is really sad. Still, Lee's main concern is with the family, despite the smoke affecting her asthma and the fire leaving her without power. This is really painful, very painful. So, you know, I just hope that, um, that the services out there, that they will get it fast because, of course, they want to come home because that's how I feel. Mayor Blas telling us organizations like the American Red Cross have already stepped in to help the family and surrounding tenants. The family receiving the mayor's certifications to get additional help from other agencies, all while the office is accepting donations for them. KUAM witnessing island residents dropping off donations at the mayor's office and the family home today. Still, the road to recovery for the family is long winding. To find out how you could help, visit the family's GoFundMe page on KUAM's website. Well, we wish them all the best. Good job with that report, Des. Mm -hmm. uh, and time for a quick break, but don't go too far. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. We knew it was time to make these when we started asking things like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to get a warm cinnamon roll right now? And why can't this kind of muffin come from the same place as a McMuffin? And isn't your coffee lonely without company from a glazed apple fritter? Well, consider these our three resounding yeses. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. gets better with more customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile phone and TV to your bundle with business bundles plus Docomo Pacific business work better together What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinemai on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. While any planning meetings or action for the $1 billion medical campus must be completely transparent and open to public scrutiny. That's the purpose of a bill that drew strong support during floor discussion at today's legislative session. Nessa Leconto reports. The bill's author, Speaker Therese Terlahi, who also chairs the Legislative Health Committee, isn't convinced that the 21st Century Healthcare Center Committee that oversees the project has been transparent enough. Decisions involving a project of this magnitude that impact the lives and health care of the entire island should not be made behind closed doors. The governor's office and Gita launched a website with meeting details and project updates back in January. Not good enough, though, says Senator Chris Barnett. I don't think that just throwing things up on a website equals transparency because right now with this uh, 21st century healthcare complex, it's about as transparent as soy sauce finadeni. Terlahi's bill would make the committee and any subcommittees fully subject to the open government law. It also requires that all records and documents be available for public scrutiny. And new committee members were added, including representatives from local medical groups, impacted municipalities, and legislative appointees. Senator Will Parkinson was able to amend the bill to add even more safeguards. In the interest of full transparency and avoidance of any conflicts of interest, I think that uh, any members that we should add to this committee should uh, be in parity with everybody else and file the same financial disclosures as required by the open government laws. It was the legislature that passed the law establishing the committee and other mandates to maintain as much scrutiny as it can over the governor's planned medical mega campus. Nestor Lecanto, KUAM News. Senators are scheduled to vote on that bill and two other measures this evening. We'll have the full details once the voting's done. 
Well, Dustin, some good news following a story we first brought you about the stray dog issue on Rhoda. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotny reports on the group answering the call for help. Here's more. I saw the news article and I was like, oh no, Rhoda's having problems. So I reached out to Jim Atalig and we had a meeting on Zoom and he said, yes, there's a dog problem and they need help. Jim Atalig with the Rhoda Municipal Council telling KUAM last month that they're going to start killing unlicensed and unclaimed dogs, which have been attacking children and adults. He says the issue has been out of control for years, and he's taking matters into his own hands with no dog control program on Rhoda. However, Lauren Cabrera, president of the Saipan Humane Society and Guam Animals in Need, offered to help along with the visiting vet. Right now we are still in communication to see fully what is their problem and what funding do they have, what, res re pardon me, what resources do they have, and what resources and funding do they need. Rhoda officials report that wild dogs have killed at least 100 deer. Fortunately, feral cats and dogs, or dogs that are wild on the street, they actually impact the wildlife. The number one issue that we're having is the sheer number of dogs. You literally have more dogs than what you can actually house on the island, and that's really going to cause a lot of disease outbreak and other concerns. Those concerns have poured over to people's private homes. So right now you're, you're breaking carrying capacity for these animals. You're also seeing a decrease in native wildlife, which is very important, not just for the health of the environment, but also the culture of the community. And you're also seeing that the community is starting to be a little concerned to actually be out in public, which is not, not okay. You shouldn't be scared to be in your front yard. And the Saipan Mayor's Office, which has eight officers under its dog control program, is also answering the call for help with plans to train the Rota Municipality staff to handle the stray dog population. We help to um, help them out on uh, every way possible um, to eliminate our stray dog population there in Rota. And so um, we're ready to assist um, if needed. Tomas Maglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. Now for a look at your world at home. Another beautiful view of Tumon Bay captured from the sky. And you can also listen to more Shimura music like this streaming anytime on Is Digital Radio. Just tap the QR code. Keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life the wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll up, pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Your sports report is coming at you like we never left. And man, I'm Jason Salas, guys. I got to tell you, it is a good day to be a knight. Because I'm joined in the KUAM News Zoom room right now by a very old friend of mine. Uh, someone whose appetite and hunger for competition and more importantly, uh, teaching young men and women how to compete the right way, exhibit sportsmanship, and bring home the trophy uh, has not wavered in the 30 years I've known him. So Chris Shepard, the athletic director of uh, St. John's School, whose school, by the way, took three volleyball championships and the Sugar and Spice soccer championship all in like a span of like three days. So uh, amazing achievement, Chris. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Glad to be here. Okay. Uh, what does this mean for, you know, for the students to not only say that, you know, 
they've been able to bring the hardware home, you know, to Upper Tumon that they can represent, have school pride and, you know, school spirit, but also, you know, that, that the fruits of their labors like have, have truly paid off. And this is something that you've always instilled in these young student athletes. Yeah, I think, I think that's the, the big thing. Uh, you know, we ask our kids to do a lot here at St. John's in terms of, uh, of course, not just athletics, but schoolwork as well. And so to balance their time and put in the best effort that they can put in and reap the rewards of the, of the work they put in uh, was a great weekend for us, uh, a great week for us this past week. So, yeah. How do you actually celebrate that many championships, you know, like like all on the same day? Or do you basically say we're going to go all the way to spring break <laughs> with you know, by celebrating this? Because, I mean, that that's that's an incredible achievement. Like You, you win four in the same weekend. Yeah, it, well, actually, we won three on the one day because uh, there you go. the the uh, boys middle school indoor volleyball team won Thursday night. And their, their game started at about 530. But just before that, on Friday. At 5 p.m., our, our uh, high school girls pair of Shihore Fujisaki and Sierra Laurent won the uh, the high school beach volleyball all-island tournament. Her dad's a pretty good, our, pretty good volleyball player, too. <laughs> yes, he is. And then yeah. our boys, team Shout up up uh, Zeke Sablon and Aiden Johnson, their, their game started at 7, so they and they won the all-island uh, beach volleyball tournament. So it was like girls win. Middle school boys win, then our high school boys won. So we were kind of spread out all over the place. So, uh, but it was it was a good feeling. and It was a good day. And speaking of expensive, is it is also expensive to build a brand new facility to hold all those trophies that you guys are bringing in? So uh, you know, maybe you guys <laughs> might be doing campus expansion pretty soon too. <laughs> yeah, like I gotta. I, I should. Uh, I was scanning around the office, but I'm not good at filming stuff. But we got a lot of trophies around here, and they're they're nice. Maybe we should build a, like a little trophy case or something out in the front, but. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think all the coaches here that coach love what they do and I love what I do. And that's what kind of makes our program roll. And uh, each <clears throat> coach here is really supportive of their kids and their program. And uh, so I'm really blessed to be where I'm at and uh, don't want to change anything for the next few years for sure. There you go. Uh, well, Chris Shepard, the athletic director at St. John's School, bringing home championships and uh, teaching kids how to play sports the right way. Shep, man, we really appreciate it. And congratulations on all your success. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right. Talk to you soon. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Mizuru tweets, confession, I really like Jack in the Box tiny tacos. My crunchy tiny tacos with creamy avocado lime sauce? There's a lot to like. I have a confession, too. One time, I, I've been advised to stop talking. Tiny tacos. Get them regular or loaded. I've always had a love for anything local. Ever since I was a child visiting my grandma's lace shop, I felt a deep connection to the local shopkeepers, local artisans, and local farmers who make Hawaii so unique and so special. Today, I'm grateful to have a job helping Bank of Hawaii and its employees give back to our local communities. I'm Momia Kimsu from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help you live your happy. Here with this experience today, I mean, top notch. It helps you in the long run. Make sure that you're always checking your health. It's not only yourself that you're checking yourself. Actually, you need to check uh, each other. And then at the same time, if you have the right facility to, to go to, please go to the medical center. Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. Hop it, everyone. My name is Devin Santis, a senior at Guam High School and a KUAM Giving Tuesday Spark Ambassador. As many of you have may watch the last Giving Tuesday, various youth leaders and myself were selected as Spark Ambassadors to uphold the spirit of giving back. However, we could not stop there. We want to continue giving back to our community, and one amazing way our producers came up with was a Spark Spotlight. Every few weeks, one of our Giving Tuesday Spark Ambassadors will take turns creating stories about a topic they find themselves passionate about. As a kickoff to this new segment on KOM News, we have our Giving Tuesday Spark Ambassadors sharing one of their passions. George Washington High School's Anne Hirotolo Calvo and John F. Kennedy High School's Ava Suba are in this wandering program called Guardians of the Reef. We give it to them here to show what it's about. 
Hi, today my name is Anhel Toy Calvo. I'm a senior at George Washington High School and one of the KUM Spark Ambassadors. So I'm here at MU Luhan today for the George Washington High School Guardians of the Reef program kickoff for the second semester. But what is the Guardians of the Reef program? Hi, today my name is Alexandra Garrido. I am the marine biology teacher here at George Washington High School and also the advisor for the Marine Mania Club. So the Guardians of the Reef program is an outreach program where high school students will be trained to learn. Um, how to teach younger elementary students about corals, what they are, why they're important, and most essential is how they as young community members can do their part to protect our quarries on Guam. What's your favorite part of the Garden of the Reef program? My favorite part of the Garden of the program has to be watching my students finally get up in front of this, their, their classes. They get to experience what it's like to be a teacher in Iraq with um, many different personalities. It's always fun to watch them answer some crazy questions, but also interact and have fun with the students. It goes to show that learning doesn't have to always be boring. You can have a great time with it. Um, and as long as everyone's learning and there is a positive outcome, then that's all good. How has uh, the Guardians of the Reef program benefited your students? I feel like it benefits our students because not only are they able to learn about you know what we can find in Guam's oceans, why they're beneficial, how it benefits us, but they get to in turn teach other students, uh, take what they learn and make an impact that hopefully one day will allow those young children to grow up, share their information and become valuable members of our community um, and environmental stewards that hopefully will help to protect Guam's oceans. Students volunteer with the Guardians of the Reef program through various organizations within the schools. This includes George Washington High School's Marine Mania and John F. Kennedy's Ocean Guardian School. So let's see how these Guardians feel about it. I'm here at MU Luhan Elementary School with the Guardians of the Reef program. So I am with... Shay Regadio. Yeah, so, uh, Shay, what are you doing here today? Uh, today I'm here at MU Luhan as a Guardian of the Reef, and I'm teaching the elementary school students about Guam's corals and why it's important to protect our ecosystems. Awesome. So, uh, how has this program benefited you? Um, this program has benefited me because I've been more immersed in marine biology, and I've been able to educate people about a subject I'm passionate about. Awesome. So what's your favorite part of the program? Uh, my favorite part of the program is playing the games with the children because it helps them reinforce the topics they're learning and I get to see them all smile and laugh. All right. Thank you so much, Shay. Thank you. Yeah. I can speak for all guardians as we hope to inspire people all around the world to spread awareness of Earth's most abundant resources. The sense of gratification we receive when we see all the excited faces happy to watch our presentations, participate in our activities, and overall just have fun is something we will never forget. For half a day, my name is Natasha De La Cruz and I'm the school principal here at NU Luhan Elementary. We are the Guardians of the Reef program here uh, presenting to the youth. The uh, fourth graders, I believe, we were here last semester with the third graders, and our presentation is about basically uh, the environment, the marine life, and ways to protect them, basically, specifically the corals. So I was just wondering how you feel about uh, us being here, the Guardians. Well, one, we're truly appreciative of all the efforts that you guys are taking to um, partner with our school. This partnership has been in existence for many, many years. We're reaching out to our students and providing them some information with regards to being proactive, you know, community members, um, safeguarding our reef and safeguarding all the things that we have on island, our resources, um, it's very impactful. There's more than just learning academics, it's how are we going to sustain the natural resources that we do have. How does it uh, personally affect the students here? Are they excited to see us? Are they, how do you think that, that plays? Our students are always excited to hear first-hand information, right? Um, like I said, the partnership has been in existence for many years between um, MU Luhan and GW, you know, with your clubs and your organizations. So students have a lot of great, you know, have great respect for you guys as uh, young adults, of course, and, you know, you pursuing something that you're very passionate about, you know, sets a positive example for them to say, hey, when I'm in high school, this is something that I can do, or this is something I'll, that I can give back, right, by also turning um, you know, returning the favor and coming back to different elementary schools and sharing that wealth of knowledge too as well. So they're excited, you know, and, and again, we appreciate your time and, and your commitment to helping our students grow. Yes, and that's basically all for the small interview here. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Stella Cruz, and thank you for welcoming us into the school. 
Wow, great I job know. to our spark leaders there. I know, you guys did awesome. Looking forward to more from you guys. Can you believe also that everything you saw shot, the interviews out there, the way the story mm -hmm. was written, and the editing? Editing. All done. They did all them. of it. Amazing. Great yeah, job, so we can't guys. Wait to see more from them. And welcome to the KWM family. Well, Biba Cumplianos. Biba, time to check out your Cold Stone Creamery birthday shout out submitted on KUAM.com. Happy birthday on this seventh day of March, and we are saying happy birthday to Miss Tin, otherwise known to you and me as Miss Christine Leungro. And happy birthday to Tin. May your day have love and laughter. Man, that's all you need. You are getting all the love in the world from the family and all of us that appreciate you, your shout-out says. And they end it with a proper mess tomorrow. Biba! Biba, Tin! We hope you have a great day. KC Pareto, happy birthday to a wonderful Nina and mom. Awesome. We hope that you have a day that is as amazing as you. This is coming from Roman Jacob and Jaylee Rose. So, KC and Tin. And Tin and KC, we hope the both of you have days as beautiful as the both of you are. We appreciate you being part of our island community and we wish you both the happiest of birthdays. And we close out with the sounds of the class of 2023 ND High Royals, the overall winners of Songfest. Yes, congratulations to my fellow Royals and great job to all putting on the theme, Royals, let us reign. Yeah, Estegui Eads of Nizu, Primetime Show, Sizu Maasi, Put and Inega, KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Half a day, my friends, and hello if you happen to see us and our camera crews down in Humatak yesterday for uh, tomorrow Discovery Day. Thank you so much to all of the wonderful villagers, the friends, the family, total strangers who came up to us and made yesterday such a special part. Also, a shout out to uh, Mayor Johnny Rivera and the wonderful village of Humatek for putting on such a wonderful, wonderful celebration down there. Man, had the time of my life. Go check it out. It's on our YouTube channel right now. As for the current moment, we got a show to do and there is a lot to tell you about. And today is, of course, Tuesday, so it's health, home, and lifestyle. Let's get right into it. And on our menu today, we are going to check in with my friend and former classmate. Well, can you be a former classmate? You're always going to be classmates. Claire Calvo is going to head to Tumon where she checks out the new Ignite Guam location down in the tourist capital. We're also going to talk to Bank of Guam and Guam Cancer Care about the Haganya City Run and how the former is benefiting the latter. Really good stuff, so make sure you register. That's on guamtime.net. Go check that out. And in House to Home, Liz and Gina are talking to me about opportunities when it comes to Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, what you need to know and how it can benefit you. All right, but over the weekend, speaking of things that happened in the past few days, there was a health fair that happened up at the Micronesia Mall. I was on site there. Amazing time with some amazing vendors. Here is a look in this week's Health Tech Report of what was going on at Health Fair 2023. Health Check is presented to you by the Medical City. Hello and hop a day, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Salas. I am on, on location today. We are doing the Health Fair, the 2023 Health Fair, brought to you by the Lions Club. You, of course, know where I am. Obviously, I'm at the Micronesia Mall. I'm going to take you all around this amazing exhibit because we have so many different um, healthcare vendors, partners. The Facebook thing that we did. Hey, there's Roy out today. I interviewed him last week. Hey, Roy. Look at that. 
All the goodies. All right, so giving you a real quick whoa, try not to get dizzy. A 360 view of the vendors, of the healthcare partners, of the practitioners, of the advocates of good health that have gathered here today at the Micronesia Mall. We are going to talk to some of them and show them what they are doing for you. I am going to talk. Of the day. Buenas. Hi, I'm from KUM. You guys are, of course, from uh, Guam Comprehensive Cancer Care. What are you guys doing here today at the health fair? Um, so we're looking to. We'd like to welcome everybody that are part here. And I know, by the way, that by the time you get to the registration, you yourself are going to get some nice gift already. Okay. All oh, the mission. Okay, yeah. And you, you guys do very, very good work in our island community. So thank you very much. And, yeah, and of course, everything here today. Let me. Everything here today is free. And I talked to Roy Adenay the other day on Facebook Live. You guys um, probably caught that. Um, Free for the community. Um, if you are uninsured, if you um, have issues with insurance, it doesn't matter. And there are screenings here that are going to go on. And it's not just, okay, we're going to take your temperature and then we're in and out. There are um, health screenings available for the eyes, uh, the feet, the nose, the, 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 the whole ENT, ears, nose, and throat. Um, there are health services available for pediatric patients, for the younger Guamanians, as well as for geriatric patients, for our beloved Manamco. Uh, they are available right now. Let's go talk to some. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Hop a day, ladies. Good morning. I'm from KUAM. Hey, I'm from GRMC. A GR oh, we love GRMC. You guys are a real good partner of ours. Okay, what are you guys doing um, here today and what are you guys passing out and talking about? So we are passing out a lot of our services. We have a bunch of bio cards here for you. One of the things that we are featuring is... I know some of these doctors. Yes. They're really good people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are featuring our snap -ed classes for this month. Uh, this is the first time we've actually done this in a while. So this is being uh, sponsored or being coordinated by our patient education department. Basically, it's free classes. Okay. All you have to do is Good morning once and you again. Get free classes every Wednesday on. Nutrition. We are going to be officially Basic opening our event up all year. So to start okay. with, can I ask everybody? Uh, uh, okay. And if, so here, and if I can just emphasize that you said free classes, right? Free classes. Free. The best four-letter word in the English language. <laughs> Good morning, oh, everyone. Limited slots. Okay. Uh, uh, would you tell me about this uh, this uh, hyperbaric chamber and, and how it actually uh, takes care of people and gets them better? Yes. Uh, so Dr. Kuyo, who recently was with GRMC before, has just returned. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so Dr. Kuyo, who was uh, recently with an internal uh, God. Please before. bless uh, the so lion has and guests assembled here today. Give us wisdom uh, and understanding uh, so that we may uphold with, um, the principle uh, of lionism. Help us pursue okay. with uh, quickly, every uh, energy so and object and ethic of our association. Okay, so th does this uh, obviously this may involve uh, people maybe uh, uh, post-operative that have some sort of like people that may have been in a car accident or something. What about people that are died? I was just about to say diabetes. Okay. The affected and the main Bless our fellow lions. Okay. Who cannot be with us? All right, ladies. Thank you so much for what you do for our community. Bless thank us you. that we may continue the ability okay, to share our blessing. fellow men for the joy of life, for the friends and friendship. Help, help our life, our club work together in the interest of helping others less fortunate and assist us in our work in the community. Amen. Thank you very much. All right. That is uh, our past history Hi, morning, governor, sir. PDG Herbie Paris. Hi, good to Thank see you. Thank you, ma'am. And now to officially welcome, let us all welcome the district governor of District 204. Okay, I want to talk to this we one because the sleep center is Lion something I'm really <laughs> curious Thank about. Thank you, Lai Hi, good morning. Can I talk to you guys? Could, could you guys talk about the sleep center? Okay. So we have um, our sleep center, which is called Pacific Sleep Center. It actually. Um, and you guys are in Upper Tumai. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Main part three squares Oh, okay. It's morning. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So it actually just gives you a little idea. It is truly a pleasure to see you all. Or we say we just have to take your time back. And um, you would have to get a referral from a doctor to get seen. Mm -hmm. Our health is our wealth. According to Mr. Albert Howard, the doctor is trying to find. If you have health, okay, you're got it. You're probably that's not a good thing. thing. If, if you have health and happiness, that's not a good thing. Yeah. And all the wealth you need. 
because you gasp right now when you wake up. That How about if, if my, if my problem care. sleeping yeah. isn't um, long term? What about if I have a, uh, a issue that's not necessarily with uh, with like my breathing when I sleep, but I just have like uh, narcolepsy or um, yeah. I just constantly just fall asleep in the weirdest places. Or... So that means you can be getting very tired. So what you can do is the doctor can also use this as a way uh, you have Today we are okay. overwhelmed by the generosity of our participants. We do have a lot of very you said, you said about, okay. Can I, could you get, could I get you to say I'm fit once more? You're fit. Oh, oh. Oh. See. Second I, I'm not seeing the cardiologist, but I already know my heart feels better. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so Their information for the sleep center. And we have other services too. Um, we have some chairs. Okay, and, also uh, up in Saipan. Yes. For the NMI. Okay, yes. so go check our and friends out. Uh, okay, so Guam uh, visiting nurses, healthcare specialties in Guam and Saipan and Pacific Sleep, Sleep Center. Okay, thank guys, thank you. So our All right. Partners, okay. So my coordination mall. That is all but all a you. snapshot thank you for of the wonderful partners that, that they have over here. In making this important for health event. check this week, man. Successful. I got a lot of people to talk to. I got a lot of friends to see. I got some information person. I got to get. So I am Jason Salas from the Micronesia Mall at Healthcare 2023, brought to you, of course, by the Lions Club District 204. Thank you to the Lions Club for making this happen. We would certainly. Health check is presented to you by the Medical City. All right, great job, me covering that uh, wonderful event. And so make sure to thank, and uh, for those of you who are at uh, Health Fair 2023, good to see you guys and good to see you guys taking care of yourself. Whew, you know what? I'm hungry. I could use some juice. I could use an acai bowl. I could use some wonderful avocado toast. Who better than to bring in Claire Cavill, who is checking out Ignite Guam's new location in the heart of Tumon, and they have wonderful, healthy entrees awaiting you. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Half a day. I'm Claire Calvo bringing you your weekly renewal. Today I am here at Ignite Guam, the new location in Tumon with Kelsey Palkinet, who is the operational manager, and Jaylene St. Nicholas, who is the marketing manager. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. Have a, I'm, I'm so excited that this opened up because a lot of times when I'm in this area, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I try, have to try to get to the Tumoning one on time or I'm really up in Daddy Doe. So how long has this one been open? We did open um, our soft opening December 10th, 2020, uh, 2022. Okay, so just a couple months ago. Yes. And I know we were talking earlier, you've been with Ignite for about a year and you've been since conception, right? Since the very beginning. Um, not really since the beginning, more um, like just a little, like after the pandemic hit, okay. just a little bit after that. And that is an interesting time. So Ignite, when exactly did Ignite open? I think was it March 1st, 2020. Wow, so yes. right before. The, and then that actually speaks volumes for the success of this business because to get through those three years and still be here, obviously right. it shows that there's a need for um, something like this. This is, I think, the only raw juice bar on Guam, right? Yes, yes. the only cold press juice bar. Okay. So tell us about your products, what you guys are all about and what you sell. So we're known for our cold pressed juice. Mm -hmm. um, here we have Green Beauty, Purify, and Recover. These are our wellness shots and our cold pressed juice. So compared to an at-home juicer, it's a centrifugal juicer. And with that, it's um, like when it's grinded up fast like mm -hmm. that, um, you lose a lot of nutrients when you use that at home juicer. Yeah. But with the cold press, um, when you're grinding the fruit and vegetables and it's pressed really slowly, you get more of that nutrient. Right. There. Well, I know because I used to be, actually, I was like a raw food. That was like, I was for, for years, I was a raw foodist and nothing could, even if a blender, if something went too fast, like if anything was heated over 108, it loses the enzymes, a right. certain amount of enzymes and nutrients. So I really appreciate that you guys take that specific care of your um, of what you provide and so I know there's also programs yes. right different yes. programs like detox programs can you tell us a little bit so we have our cleanse program mm -hmm. um, for our cleanse program you don't, you don't consume any consume any solid food um, you're taking a break from solid food all the junks we have our stage one which is uh, four smoothies and one juice and then we also have our stage two it's two smoothies three juices and one one a shot 
And then our stage three is six juices and two shots. Nice. Yes. So I know some people get a little concerned about their glucose, you know, levels and whatnot with, with the sugar content. But there, the juices are not just primarily fruit. There are some that are just vegetables, Correct. right? Yes. And so like anyone could, like someone even who's like has sugar sensitivity would be fine to have, like to go on the program and have that many juices a day? Yeah. Yes. Um, not a problem. We have um, one of our keto uh, juices are the Green Beauty. That one's mostly vegetables. Um, for glucose, for sugars, don't need to worry too much because they're made from fruits and vegetables, no added artificials. And so other than the juices, there's also, what else do you guys have on your menu? Our smoothies. So uh, we sell smoothies, they're vegan free. Mm -hmm. uh, we use raw products. Oh, they're vegan. Products. Yeah, they're vegan. They're vegan. And um, we use, a fr we use fr fruits, vegetables, some frozen fruits, some vegetables, and then um, our main base of our smoothies are mostly bananas. Got it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited, especially because Synergy has been doing their detoxes since 2006, and we're so happy to collaborate with Ignite, especially for that second and third week, because similarly, we do the first week is all plant-based, second is raw plant-based, and the third is all liquid. So you will definitely see a lot of people coming in here <laughs> desperate for those juices on I'm week three, as are we. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we close? Well, for our store hours, we are open Daddy Do and some morning from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday, and then on Sundays we have our Daddy Do and Tumon location open from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Hyatt, right? And Hyatt. Oh, yes, <laughs> and we have. Um, if you're not able to come down to any of our stores, we do have our juices available at Hyatt at the deli. And we always take advantage of that because after our yoga, we have Synergy Yoga Sundays and Wednesdays and afterwards, a lot of times there's still some juices left up there at the cafe. <laughs> thank you again thank so much. You. And thank you all. I'll see you next time on your weekly renewal. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. All right, coming up after the break, we are saying the F word for closures because we are talking about real estate. No, not that F word. Keep your, keep your minds clean. There's a family show right here on the hotspot. And we will be back. We are talking with Liz and Gina. House to Home is next. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. If you feel it come around with round with round, everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. Everybody get down when we give it to you. Everybody feel it come around with Mizuru tweets, confession, I really like Jack in the Box Tiny Tacos. My crunchy tiny tacos with creamy avocado lime sauce? There's a lot to like. I have a confession too. One time, I... I've been advised to stop talking. Tiny Tacos, get them regular or loaded. House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Tuesday means that we are talking about uh, real estate here. And I guess, you know what, Liz, let me actually spotlight you real quick because... You are in America's finest city. Liz is actually joining us, everybody, from San Diego and what looks to be a wonderful pier. Liz, I'm sure it's very, very cold that close to the ocean. <laughs> it is cold. We're getting ready to jump on a plane tomorrow morning to head back home where it's nice and warm. It has been really good weather here. And, and Gina is very, very warm and warm and toasty in uh, in her office. And I'm just, you know, I, I could be anywhere because I'm using the virtual background, but uh, ladies, good to see you as always. And I wanted to talk about two things that honestly have puzzled me over the years. Uh, maybe Gina, I'd like to start with you. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, 
right? It's not just like two two clever names and everything like that. They actually represent a very very significant uh component force i mean if we may in uh in the american capitalist system so do you know what are freddie may and fanny mac and how much impact do they have on guam the reason they're important is they're the underwriting underwriting organizations of the federal government that actually gives the banks the money that they need to keep our mortgages going because can you imagine it would be like me if i have 100 bucks and i lend out 100 bucks i'll run out and then I won't be able to lend out to any of my, any more of my family or friends that might need the money. But the way the banks work is Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae are the actual underwriting organizations that give them the money so they could keep that capital rolling. But what's important right now is what we wanted to bring up is uh, over the years, Liz, I don't know how long, but it's been quite a long time that we actually sell properties that were underwrited by Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Uh, the bank forecloses on these homes and then eventually they end up being listed on the open market. I was, um, you know, Liz and I just got an assignment this week. And what we notice is when we get an assignment, that means we, it, it's almost like once the tide comes in with these foreclosures, we start receiving them. It'll be a, you know, it'll be a group or it'll go on for a year or, you know who knows, but once we receive an assignment, we then start receiving them. So, uh, so a little know, bit it, of a trickle indicates that like the wave is coming, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The wave is coming for foreclosures. Nice so wave behind the, you too, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> well, Freddie Mac uh, at one time would place it on the market the moment they would get it. Of course, after they've done the paperwork and the ownership goes to Freddie Mac. However. Uh, what happens now is they wait for the right of redemption uh, to be completed, meaning they wait for a year for the owner, uh, for the, the Freddie Mac to actually own the property. Otherwise, if they place it on the market, the right of redemption is still in effect. So after one year, the ownership goes right to Freddie Mac. So <clears throat> at that point, we, Remax Diamond Realty, places the property on the market. Um, there is a process. They can't, you know, they have to come to us, the listing agent, and there is a paperwork process to put the documentation together to purchase the property. So um, they can't just walk in and want to buy it. There's a paperwork process. Freddie Mac is rather stringent with how uh, they sell their property. They require certain documentations within certain timelines. So there is a process that we, as their rep representative, have to follow um, in order to process that particular sale for the property. And it could be as well that there may be multiple offers. Since it is a foreclosure property, um, there may be multiple offers. And whoever puts in an offer may have to be willing to compete now these properties because because they're the result of foreclosure you may get some um some very very valuable property i would assume gina and um uh you know i mean it, it runs the gamut right so is this a deal that people need to pounce on because i know people like my age they would always go through the newspaper every day and they would say like okay well uh, a car got repossessed because you know like the the owner uh, the owner passed away the owner went to jail what have you i mean there's a million different reasons it could happen this is not that kind of transaction it's a lot more technical like uh liz just beautifully said you know uh there are requirements because this is underwritten by the federal government but um gina is this seen as like a as a deal that if you are in the market for property whether as investment or you know to find your perfect home you really need to jump on you, so it's not something you can jump on but it's certainly something mm -hmm. you need to position for okay because most of these properties in the last few years what we're noticing is when we get these properties most of them are fixer uppers and in order to in order to compete as liz mentioned in order to compete there are some there are some paperwork that you have to have in order before we can even allow you to submit an offer um most of these properties are not the way they're the, the condition that they're in they're not going to be financeable if you're not creative so so that's you know you really need to talk to your realtor or if you don't have a realtor that you're already working with you need to call us in advance so we can get you positioned 
so that when the property is, when we open the property up for bids, that you are able to bid because you, with these types of, of properties, because they're not financeable, they're not in good living, con, uh, in, in living uh, move-in ready condition, mm. you're going to... Mm -hmm. The wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll up, pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app, and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Hotspot is here, everybody. I'm Jason Salas. As always, glad to bring you amazing stories about our island community and incredible people doing such positive things. Two such Guamanians are the wonderful, local, lovely ladies who are joining me now in the KUM News Zoom room. Of course, the unmistakable Nona Perez from Guam Cancer Care and Leslie Leon Guerrero, who has brought swag today to the interview. <laughs> Les, you are rocking some gear, and I know you've got some amazing uh, giveaways to give away at the uh, the Bank of Guam. Ooh, I'm going to stop talking. Just tell me what you got going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I just wanted to show off some of the gear we have for our upcoming run at our Haganya City block party that's happening this Saturday. And our run shirts are in. They're not the quick dry material everyone's used to, but we're calling these the after run shirts. So you can wear this every day to party. Uh, and it has our run logo on it. And okay. then you can wear it off to the club so after you go out that night. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, you know, we got this cool bag. You can stuff all your stuff in, throw it over your shoulder. Don't forget your wallet. There'll be a lots of reasons to give and spend all in support of Guam Cancer Care this weekend. So those shirts really, cool really got to really pop. I got everybody. to say, Les, they're really, really nice. Love okay. yes. So this is the color that our runners will be wearing and our volunteers will all be in like a melon mango color. Okay, so I don't know if you have like a, like a like a set theme, but if if I may actually for once in my life actually make use of my UOG marketing bureau now, I want to say the teal is for real. <laughs> Love maybe, it. Maybe maybe not. Love I, it. We'll, and teal and this color is the color we'll of kindness. Which... <laughs> but this blue, this blue is the color of kindness too, and that's been a a huge oh. part of Bank of Guam and our giving back to the community. So we're encouraging everybody to sport the kindness color and be kind and, and really help us raise awareness, raise much needed funds for Guam Cancer Care. So now that's something I everyone can be kind get, in this color. Behind it. And of course, Nona is here, of course, because the main beneficiary for uh, Bank of Guam and their amazing event, both the block party uh, and the 5K run is Guam Cancer Care. For no and so Nona, you guys never stop working. You never stop educating the community, providing resources Correct. And, and being Correct. there for cancer patients as well as their, their families and caretakers. Of course. And you know what? Guam, Guam Cancer Care appreciates Bank of Guam for many years. Uh, they've given us so much to give back to our patients and um, whatever we receive, it goes right back into our community. Um, our funding is being used to not only for our patients, but also for our our cancer screening and education and cancer screening in general. So thank you so much for choosing us and all of us at Guam Cancer Care will be there that day. Absolutely. Show our support. So Mm -hmm. Yet another way that, that we can do something fun, do something positive, do something as an island Correct. family, and make sure that we take care of, of the people in our, in our community who, 
who need it most at their time. Absolutely. So, uh, okay, so Leslie, I know I had a wonderful interview with two of your colleagues um, last week and everything. They got everybody psyched about the party itself and about the run. Um, let's talk about registration now, if we can, because now like, you, you had me with the shirt and the bag. I want to know where I got to go to sign up. Absolutely. So you can actually visit any of our website, our social media profiles, and the link is in our bio, or go to guamrun.net and register online. All of our registration is online this year. It's $15 per runner. Like I said, comes with this wonderful shirt and run bag, as well as some other goodies. Um, and then you can do your packet pickup on Friday at the Bank of Guam headquarters from 12 all the way up until I believe we're running till five o'clock that day. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times you can just drive up and one of our guys can come out there and meet you in your car as well. But um, we're trying to eliminate all of that logistical stuff uh, come race day. So it's smooth. Everyone has their bags. Everyone has everything that they need. So register online. Um, and $15 per person, or you can register a group of five for $50 and save a little bit of money. Man, Les, you, you guys are here always innovating Cancer over Care. there at the, at the Bank of Guam, because I thought drive-up yes. I thought drive up tellers and drive-up ATMs and online banking was cool. Now you've actually got drive-up 5K registration. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feel free to come to Guam Cancer Care as well. We have registrations here. There you go. Okay. And when is Zen Hafe Day? As you all know, our island's had a very successful year. And I'd love to hear about all of the progress we've made. Skyler, why don't we start with you? We've topped over